This is part two of our series on surviving but not thriving. In the course of our work as a think tank, there's some truths that come directly from the Word of God or initially from the Word of God. There's others that come through experience. This piece began with experience, then we took it back to the Word of God. I was working with an individual in ministry over the phone. They had a situation that wasn't progressing. Story of my life. I had tried everything I knew. They were stuck. We knew it was demonic, and I was all out of ammunition. So I was sitting there silently saying, Lord, um, what do we do? And God's instructions were very cryptic and precise. He said, fix the compass. I'm thinking, fix the compass. Right. I have no theology of compasses at that point. But I know how to throw mud on the wall. If I get it wrong, God and the devil both ignore me pretty quickly. So not a whole lot of risk. So I began to hack and whack, um, rejecting and removing any ungodly compass and reestablishing a righteous compass that's connected to the cornerstone of Jesus Christ. And we got a pretty serious eruption. Not only was there an eruption of the demonic, but there was an extraordinary release after that in the person's life. What really intrigued me about that individual was that prior to that day, they had a terrible sense of directionality. They were absolutely locked onto their GPS. A trip that they had made 30 times, they would still get out the GPS because they weren't sure they could actually get there five miles away without the GPS. I pondered that and I thought, you know, for a grown up person to be that insecure about directions, and within a day of working on the compass situation, that changed. And they were able to drive places that they kind of sort of knew without the GPS, and they were able to find their way to new places without a GPS. And I thought, hmm, okay. Footnote number 8,722 of spiritual warfare trivia put in the file, probably used once or twice again before the end of my life. It wouldn't go away. Kept coming back, coming back, coming back. And I couldn't figure out what else to do with it, where to take it, you know. God obviously wasn't done with a compass thing, but I didn't know what to do. So the idea of a spiritual compass is sitting there inconveniently on my desk, bugging me for weeks, I think. Got into a situation, as is my norm, I was stuck. Nothing worked, and they were hurting. I turn to God and say, um, my next cue card, please. And God said, um, fix the gyroscope. I thought, right, fix the gyroscope. Mm -hmm. So I threw some mud on the wall. We hacked and whacked and did this and that and the other and removed and replaced and that individual's life has never been diff never that individual's life has never been the same since then extraordinary transition so now i have a compass and a gyroscope sitting in the middle of my desk thinking i think there's a connection god took me to a passage that i have loved since i was 15 years old and that is Ezekiel chapter 1, the great vision of God's honor guard coming, preparing the way for Ezekiel's ordination sermon that begins in chapter 2. The honor guard prepared everything. 
Then a crystal platform was established, sapphire throne was positioned, and the God of all glory came and sat on that sapphire throne. I've been over that passage so many times. I love it. It, it does something deep to my spirit. And this time I saw that core part of the passage that has always hooked me in. Wheels within wheels with eyes all around so that they could see in every direction. And then I realized, uh-oh, the cherubim were below the crystal platform. We've got maleness here. Does that mean that these wheels within wheels are the spiritual gyroscope? I got a confirmation of my spirit, I thought. That means the gyroscope is male, which would say the compass is female, and we're back to the sequence of female and male devices in the brain. I went back and re-looked at the compass and said, okay, spiritually, what's the deal with a compass? Now, I have an advantage over some of you, and that is that I was raised biculturally. And in our American culture, our orientation is to the north. We have defined compasses for the world, and... When you hold your compass in the hand, zero is due north, and you build off of north. I was taught you face north, and when you're facing north, you can point with that hand to the east and that one to the west, and south is behind you. And yet, that's so not biblical, nor is it my heritage, because biblically, everything points to the east. The east, the east, the tabernacle oriented to the east, the temple oriented to the east, the campsites in the wilderness to the east, Jesus Christ coming from the east, entering Jerusalem from the east. That is God's focal point, the east, not the north. And in the Spanish and Latin American cultures that I'm familiar with, the east is the orientation point, and we have some bleed over from that into our language. We talk about being disoriented, orient being the east. We've lost our east instead of losing our north. So at least the Western culture's compass points to the north that in many biblical passages is associated with the powers of darkness, in George Otis Jr.'s masterpiece, The Labyrinth, he postulates that when Lucifer was cast out of heaven, he fell into Lake Baikal, and that region in Siberia is the north, the mountain of the north that's referred to in Scripture, the antithesis of everything that Jerusalem is. So we now have a compass. Are we going to orient a compass according to the culture? Or worse yet, according to the demonic realm, or are we going to orient the compass to the east according to God's spiritual compass? It was beginning to fit together. I had a little bit more confidence about this modality and the fact that it applied to more than just that one person because we all have weird deliverance experiences that are just one off. Others are principles that are portable, transferable from one person to another. I went back to the gyroscope. If the compass is the horizontal orientation, the gyroscope very clearly is the vertical. And in the powers of darkness, there is an extraordinary battle over whether we are going to be oriented up or we're going to be oriented down. Let's use one simple illustration in the whole new age arena with energy medicine the mindset is that you're grounded from your tailbone to earth and you draw strength from the earth and it flows up through your body whether you're talking hindu chakra points 
that are flowing up, or whether you're talking the Masonic, you have 33 vertebra in your spine and they start at the bottom and they build up by degrees and when you get here you become a god in their theology. It is all from the earth up. That is the orientation of the world's gyroscope and the devil's gyroscope. God has a very different orientation. Jesus Christ is our head. He is our covering. And life flows from above down through our bodies to our feet. And our feet then are releasing energy into the land, sanctifying the land, rather than our body absorbing defilement from the land. So the gyroscope again fits within that broader framework of the spiritual dynamics that we have experienced, understood, observed in terms of the Egyptian heresy and the reversal twisting making opposite of everything that God is. So with a righteous spiritual compass, we are oriented east. With a righteous spiritual gyroscope, we are oriented to receive from God and from that vertical orientation, life flows down. That was a skimpy theological package, but enough for me to begin experimenting. So after the first individual that I accidentally bumbled through with this, I began to pick off some of my beloved, messed up, righteous people that were pursuing God with all their heart and soul and mind and strength and were surviving but not getting traction. For our test cases, I didn't give them the theology. We have some guinea pigs that trust me implicitly, which probably isn't very smart, but they do. And I said, can I experiment? Can I try something on you and see whether there's a problem here? And then I would just speak to the ungodly compass in them and then the ungodly gyroscope. And we would get reaction, we would go after it and see a transformation. One thing that has emerged out of this that will interest many of you is the issue of changing reality in dreams. Some people in the world, a fairly significant group, dream consistently. They dream of being chased and in the chase, their world morphs. They're running towards a door, but by the time they get there, the door becomes a wall. They are moving to hide behind a piece of furniture, and about the time they get there, the furniture vanishes or becomes transparent. In the dreams, there is a morphing world. That seems to be a sign of having difficulties with your compass and or your gyroscope because individuals who have had that before don't have those kinds of morphing dreams after we clean up. In the next videos, I'm going to talk through a deliverance process for each one of these. Again, you can observe with your mind without engaging. Just tell the spirit realm you're just watching or you can agree with your spirit and allow the power of God to flow. I need to give you one very, very clear, strong word of warning. For whatever reason, this is intense. My mantra is that the best deliverance is a boring deliverance. I don't really want to talk to demons. I don't want to hear them. I don't want to see them manifest. I want them to get on the first bus and get out of town. Just simple, quiet, no drama. Unfortunately, and nobody that I've worked with has it been simple, quiet, with no drama. It's always been intense, been very painful to your brain sometimes. I mean, really painful as some people experience this removal of the old and the building of the new. Feel free to punch pause and wait five minutes for the pain to recede before you go on with the video. And almost everybody has had the energy sucked out of them, needing as much as 12 hours of sleep at night for several days after this experience. So I'm encouraging you to not be tough, macho, 
but to partner with the reality of the flow. And allow yourself to feel what you're feeling and tomorrow and the next day accommodate a lighter, easier schedule, preferably without a lot of hard decision making or conflict because your spirit, your soul, and your body get enormously rearranged. With that word of warning, we will move on, first of all, to the compass, since we need to do the female first. <laughs> 